Okay, go. Hi, I'm Rob Alvey. I'm a geologist up in the New York area. And I'm really here just to explain something that I've been working on for over 10 years. Uh, I can show you some of the poison ivy I got, x-rays of a broken back, broken finger, all in fun. And what I really want to do is challenge you that there's enough talent in this room with the technical expertise and the public speaking abilities that you people have to start a program in your local area for environmental stewardship, environmental education, protection and preservation of some of our local wildlife that will make an impact on the next generation. While you guys were having lunch, I went down to the public information office downstairs. A uh, little brochure on doggy do. What does it mention? Don't walk your dogs when they poop. Some of it goes to stormwater basins. What is groundwater? Another brochure mentioning surface water runoff into our stormwater basins. Endangered species coloring book. Some of the decline of some of the birds and the wildlife we have in the U.S as a result of overpopulation and development. The list continues and every one of these brochures in itself regards stormwater runoff into stormwater basins. I live on Long Island, a suburban area, very well populated and pretty much developed. And the county and the state highway departments have in installed stormwater basins, which are dirty depressions in the ground in a designated area so the streets don't flood, so our backyards don't flood, and our basements don't flood, and it diverts the rainwater into an area that's isolated, and it also, in our case, is a sole source aquifer, which means we get all of our drinking water from the groundwater. It recharges that water supply. I live in an area that's got 25,000 people. We have three or four of these stormwater basins that service our area of about five or six square miles, nine-acre site, five-acre site, another three-acre site. These are the designated areas that have to be open, can't be built on. So what did the county and the state do? Build a simple chain-link fence around it to keep people out. The goal that I started was, rather than keeping people out, allow these basins to do their function, to drain the local streets, but to make them into a community nature preserve, to look at places where you can take, instead of an eyesore in your neighborhood, an attractive area that is going to have wood chip walkways, nesting boxes for birds, re-landscaping these areas with native species, and to do the outreach to the local community through volunteer services. Every high school, every church group, every bar mitzvah kid, has to do a few hours of community service. And when you can take all of these resources and channel them into one area, you have basically a non-ending free labor supply that's only going to take a little bit of your time. A little bit of time I put in has probably been about 10 to 15,000 hours over the last 10 years. And now I get calls from government agencies and government politici politicians other county people because I basically said I don't know everything so I want to talk to the Nature Conservancy I want to talk to the Audubon Society about what birds are in the area the Nature Conservancy how to best manage a property what can we do to make it attractive and make it sustainable this system really works you've given talks to the school you've gotten at one time a fifth grade class I've had fifth grade classes come down to a simple sum which actually, instead of having uh, negligence or hang out for in the evening for beer or a teenage place that's unsupervised, now it's attractive. And the kids that are growing up in this area have more and more of a respect for the environment. And some of them are even going into education. My own daughter, urban forestry at Virginia Tech for a master's program, Another kid took the same idea from a high school point of view, Intel Science Foundation semi-finalist on converting and dual use of these basins for communities. Other communities are taking some of them, using them for recreational purposes to make them a viable area. The area I have is nine acres. In 
Garden City, Long Island, and each acre of property is worth about a million dollars. I have a 10 acre, $10 million Bob's Big Backyard, and you can do the same here every year. Good.